welcome to the second module of the compiler design course uh, where uh, we talked about compiler phases last class and in this module we are going to talk about the compiler phases with reference to an example and we will also talk about the tools that are available for the various phases of the compiler. The objective here of this uh, course of course are it is to learn an example on the process that happens in the various phases of the compiler and also the tools available for the compiler phases because constructing a compiler, a compiler from scratch is going to be very, very tedious. Therefore, what normally happens is uh, you will try to get uh, the available tools and then try to integrate that for a particular language and then use it as a reference to uh, and try to build up on top of it and add uh, some more modules, add some more functionality, add features which are necessary for a particular program input source program and then depending upon the target program again that could basically be modified. So, you are not going to design a compiler from scratch you are trying to go through an existing tools which are available. So, let us just go through that uh, before uh, we look at the phases again as a quick recap. So, where uh, the lexical phase, syntactic phase, semantic phase, intermediate code generation all these four could be grouped into one pass optimization is one pass and then code generation is going to be the next pass. Let us consider this example which is given in uh, Aho Sethi Olman the textbook uh, which is uh, position is equal to initial plus rate into 60. Now, this is what basically a user tries to code. So, in uh, a C program or any Pascal program this is a Pascal code because it says colon equal to for assignment. So, what any high level programming language will basically have some such an instruction and you have initial plus rate into 60. So, you have here your symbol table, the symbol table has simply now got the uh, variables position, initial rate etcetera and uh, their corresponding attributes will basically be populated later. Now, I will also have here the data type associated with this in the symbol table and uh, this variable position is at location 1, variable position initial is at location 2 variable rate is at location 3. So, this is my attribute which I referred to in the first module. So, where uh, we said every um, lexeme will have a name and an attribute. So, name is position, attribute is going to be the position of the symbol table which is going to be 1 here. Now, if this is given to the lexical analyzer, what it does is it breaks this into tokens. So, it groups initial as one token, rate as one token, plus is another token, star is another token, 60 is another token, same is the case with position and equal to. It is going to give, since these are variables, it is going to give identifier 1, identifier 2, identifier 3 to these variables. According to it, now it is going to be id 1, id 2 and id 3. So, it simply breaks this into tokens, lexemes, okay, which is nothing but a sequence of characters and assigns a token to every lexeme. Now, this is given to a parser which is a syntax analyzer, okay, the second phase. The second phase what it does is using a grammar which is a context free grammar, it is going to construct a derivation tree, okay, otherwise called as a parse tree. Okay. So, I have here id 1 colon equal to id 2 plus id 3 into 60, I am going to have id 1 here, this is assigned a value which is computed by computing id 3 into 60 first and then adding with that id 2. So, I have id 2 here, I have a plus here, with that what will I add? I will add the multiplied value of id 3 into 60. So, this is what it basically constructs. As of now, it does not understand what is uh, happening here, how it should compute, but simply validates whether this statement position is equal to initial plus rate into 60 is valid or invalid is what it is trying to check. Okay, it will basically check and put it here. The next phase is going to be the semantic process where I said type checking happens here, coercion happens here. So, coercion assuming that uh, this is initial plus rate into 60. So, rate is typically rate of interest is what this variable talks about. So, 60 is getting converted to a floating point number. Okay, so, it does a coercion here where it converts into real of 60, it is going to convert this into 60.0. So, that is what basically happens in the 
next process next phase it also tells it that id 1 can be of type only floating point uh, because anyway it is doing a type conversion here type conversion here so it's going to basically say that id 1 will be of type uh, floating point that will be also checked and uh, put, put in uh, put in your symbol table here and then that is given to the code generation phase which is the intermediate code generator where how it does is it converts this into into real so that happens first every leaf every interior node is typically assigned a temporary variable okay and uh, every leaf node is going to be your user defined variable so here i have 60 interior node is into real of 60 so this is an interior node so i say temp1 equal to into real of 60 and then i can say temp2 is equal to id3 into temp1 so this is temp2 the uh, node corresponding to the star node that is a multiplicate multiplication of lhs and rhs that is going to be your temp2 which is id3 multiplied by temp1 okay because this node corresponds to temp1 and temp3 will be id2 plus temp2 okay id2 plus id2 is lhs rhs is going to be temp2 which is the star node and that is this node which is temp1 and that gets assigned to id1 so id1 is equal to temp3 so this is what happens in the intermediate code where i have basically at the most three addresses to work with and then the code optimizer okay what it does is temp1 is equal to into real of 60 okay it is a constant value so it is trying to put that right away here and then multiply this with with id3 and put it to temp1 now what am i doing here i am computing id2 plus temp2 putting it into temp3 and temp3 gets put into id1 so i am combining the last two instructions into one instruction where tem3 and tem3 both are same here okay so i will simply call this as id1 is equal to id2 plus tem1 so i have done some optimization here there are a lot of optimizations available and uh, we will go through with that uh, um, as we move on to the next uh, few next modules and then finally the code uh, optimizer will give this output and the code generator will basically take this as an input and then converts this into machine instructions so what am i saying here id3 into 60.0 so i'll use a register called as r2 where i am moving the value id3 into r2 and then i'm doing a multiplication of floating point where i'm multiplying the register content of r2 with hash 60 points it's a it's a uh, immediate operand 60.0 okay it's a floating point multiplication i have specified that multiply floating point and then i do what move this floating point value into temp1 which is nothing but id2 yeah i have it hard to r2 here and then i'm going to move i'm going to next step so r2 has the product of id3 and 60.0 and then i'm moving here id2 into r1 and then adding r2 and uh, temp1 temp1 is available in register r2 here so add f r2 comma r1 and move the result back into id1 so move f r1 comma id1 so this is my flow so the first phase basically puts it into tokens so i have them i have given names to them which is id1 id2 id3 etc the second phase constructs a syntax tree to validate whether the input sentence corresponds to any syntax tree it has basically got now the syntax tree is basically constructed based upon a known context free grammar so for every programming construct you have a context free grammar so given a context free grammar to check whether a sentence belong to this grammar or not can be done by constructing a derivation tree otherwise called as the parse tree that is what it constructs here and then once the parse tree is correct it is going to basically do a type checking and also do type coercion after that it is going to convert this into an intermediate code representation and finally optimize the intermediate code to, and then generate the final code on the inter optimized intermediate code uh, based upon a set of instruction set available with it now supposing somewhere it goes wrong supposing i have a plus plus operand here as against a plus operand a plus plus operand doesn't require uh, it's a it requires only one opera, operand right it doesn't require uh, two operands a plus plus operator here it is going to throw an error here but it is not going to stop with the compilation 
it is going to log that as an error it will recover from the error with some assumption okay so the assumption normally the compiler makes is can be grouped into two kind of assumptions the one is the panic mode of error recovery other one is the phrase mode of error recovery the panic mode of error recovery is very simple it is trying to simply delete some characters till it finds a proper character that matches a particular grammar so in the phrase mode it adds some logic it adds some rules it adds some uh, things as error um, information etc so that is a different uh, set altogether so it recovers from the error with some assumption but it logs that statement as an error in the error handler okay and it proceeds with the compilation the error recovery the error handler's job is to simply recover from error so that the subsequent compiler phases can be going on okay and not to just correct the user error and then proceed with the compilation process assuming it is going to be correct okay so this is what happens in the uh, compiler's phases uh, let us just expand on this example position is a lexeme id lexeme mapped into a token id comma 1 okay where id is an abstract symbol standing for identifier and one points to the symbol table entry for position this is what i said it is going to have a name and a attribute the attribute is going to be one here because it's available at the first position in the symbol table and id is going to be the attribute because the compiler gives it as i identifies position as identifier one the symbol table entry for an identifier holds information about the identifier such as its name and type okay other information are also possible to be put into your symbol table we will move on as we will uh, inform as we move on with the uh, syllabus and then equal to is a lexeme that is mapped into the token assignment operator since this token needs no attribute value we have omitted the second component uh, of the um, information that is every lexeme has got two components right one is the name other one is the attribute value so since this is going to be Uh, an operator there is no attribute value available here so it simply has the assignment operator as the information same is the case with initial initial is a lexeme that is mapped into the token id comma 2 where two points is symbol table entry for initial and plus is a lexeme again it is going to be mapped into token plus rate is a lexeme mapped into the token id comma 3 where three points is symbol table entry for rate similarly with this case of star and 60 star is a lexeme that is mapped into the token star which is indicating multiplication operation and 60 is a lexeme that is mapped into the token 60 again doesn't require any symbol table entry here after simply tokenizing simply putting it as lexemes uh, you have the grammar context free grammar for assignment expression which is nothing but statement produces id colon equal to e okay lhs is simply an identifier rhs will be an expression the expression can be of course i have just given here um, expression involving multiplication addition and uh, parenthesization so where this e could be e plus t or t and t could be t star f or f f produces parenthesis e close parenthesis or id so this is what basically the grammar corresponds to an this is a uh, sub grammar corresponding for an assignment expression because i have not looked upon arrays here i have not looked upon pointers here i have not looked upon other operators here Uh, so therefore this is just a small subset sub production set of a assignment expression grammar so for that particular grammar this is going to be my corresponding derivation tree okay so here s produces id colon equal to e this is my s here lhs is id colon equal to this is my expression here this expression is expression plus t this expression is nothing but t which is nothing but f which is nothing but a simple identifier initial if you remember that expression produces t t in turn produces f f in turn produces id so in our example expression here is nothing but e this is the same e okay this e produces e plus t this is t t produces f f produces initial so initial is my identifier here again plus t now this t is nothing but t star f okay t star f where t again corresponds to f and then id id is nothing but rate here and this f corresponds to id where id here is a constant so e id colon equal to e plus t where this t is t star f okay so this is an unambiguous grammar 
okay e plus t and t star f this is a unambiguous grammar of the expression grammar here so i am able to map this statement with my expression grammar available therefore this statement is syntactically correct okay that is what happens in the second phase of the compiler so this is what we just now saw id comma 1 this is my lexeme equal to id comma 2 plus id comma 3 into 60. So, the parse tree is constructed the parse tree is correct and the compiler proceeds to the next phase. If the parse tree is incorrect on the other hand what happens is this basically recovers from the error and then logs into the error handler for subsequent correction by the user. Now, this is what happens as uh, the intermediate as, as I just now said t1 is equal to into float of 60 t2 is equal to id3 into t1 and t3 is equal to id2 plus t2 and id1 equal to t3 this is what happens in the four phase four steps of the code generation similar to corresponding to this one as i said interior nodes are numbered t1 t2 t3 so t1 is equal to this into 60 t2 is equal to id into something and finally id is equal to this one so with that you can optimize as we already said okay and then this is going to be my final code corresponding to generating so similar the example same I, as, same example which i gave you earlier the same thing is here uh, given again for a better understanding so in the first two phases you normally have a the lexical phase basically does the job of um, uh, combining you based upon what is called as a regular expression for generating for defining patterns and the second phase uses a context free grammar for validating your syntax of every statement and the third phase uses the type checking again based upon some for every grammar production you will have semantic rules to convert and do type checking and the third phase and, and the fourth phase the intermediate code generation phase basically uses a lookup kind, kind of scenario where if this is going to be my input for every interior node create a new label and then it is going to create semantic rules again the semantic rules are created for every grammar production and then the code generation phase uses this intermediate code and generate final code based upon the target instruction set now after uh, this example let us just move on to the cousins of the compiler uh, the preprocessor assembler the loader linker and the debugger all are basically called as the cousins of the compiler so we already said what is a preprocessor preprocessor simply your hash define your macros all these are preprocessors they are basically converted into the source source language itself before compilation and assembler is uh, the compiler generally produce assembly code as we already know and uh, the assembler uh, uses this to generate a relocatable machine code loader copies the code into memory for execution it allocates storage setting production bits mapping virtual addresses etc and the linker handles relocation and resolves the symbol references now debugger basically is a tool is a utility used to identify and point pinpoint errors in your source code so as i already said the compiler is not uh, constructed directly from scratch the compiler is basically constructed based upon um, some um, available existing tools now we have various uh, tools available and we will just list here a few the first one is the uh, lexical analysis phase a tool which is called as a scanner generator uh, whose input will typically be a source program and the output will basically be a uh, sequence of lexemes the task of reading characters from the source program and recognizing tokens or basic syntactic components are done by this based upon a, a list of reserved words so the lexical analyzer basically uses a list of keywords and reserved words and it also has some patterns available based upon whatever pattern you specify it compares with the list of reserved words and then generates lexemes accordingly the lexer typically available is the lex which is a short form of lexical analyzer generator uh, or you can also have a version of lex called as flex uh, which is fast lexical analysis generator these two the i mean these are basically uh, utility available as part of the um, unix programming environment uh, where it is a rule based programming language lex is a tool it's a rule based programming languages language 
as against your structured or object oriented programming language this is a rule based programming language so how it does basically is uh, it has um, the definitions are within a pair of a double percentage okay so the first it has got three sections the first section basically is going to be specifying uh, the declarations what variables you want etc could be declared there and in the second uh, section you will have uh, actions and rules okay you will have actions and rules that is if this is going to be my action uh, what rule should i basically ad uh, adopt that is action in the sense that you will define a pattern as the lhs the corresponding rhs will basically be a action on that pattern okay so this is what is a rule based programming language typically is ex expected to do supposing if i wanted to print um, uh, from a sequence of from a string if i wanted to print characters that begin with a k so i will define a pattern for this particular uh, output which i want for example i want to start with k and then i can have any number of characters so my regular expression will be correspondingly k followed by any combinations of a to z or a to z small and capitals can be mixed up if that's my a uh, thing i will do what i will simply do a print of that particular um, pattern of that particular word so i'll say, simply say okay print this word that is my action so i have a pattern and a corresponding action that will be in the second section the third section will basically be a simple uh, c program main function and a return statement so what it does is it uses a lex compiler the lex compiler okay this will basically be defined as a dot l file and a source program which is written in the language lex which will have a dot l extension indicating for lex okay after a dot l extension is available this will run through a lex compiler the lex compiler provides an output as lex dot yy dot c file which is a dot c file now once i have a dot c file in place i can use a c compiler to run this to generate an output okay so the output will basically be whatever pattern i have specified and whatever action basically does basically perform for the particular pattern match so in our example i said if it starts with a k print that word so words starting with k alone will be printed the rest of the words will basically be skipped okay so like that i normally define patterns to do whatever i want to want it to basically do so this is what is the first phase job the second phase is nothing but the syntax analyzer that we have a tool uh, the tool is called as a parser generator and um, it basically produces an yes or no answer okay mm, this is also available as part of the unix environment where the tool is called as a yak yak basically stands for yet another compiler compiler you have another uh, tool called as bison uh, all these both are actually parser generator that is given a particular grammar again this has got three sections the first section will basically be um, again between pair of pa percent pair of um, uh, percentage symbols i will have here again the variable declarations and the grammar will be declared here and the second part will basically be uh, the action and the rules and the third part will again be uh, the simple uh, main of your c language again this is going to have the input which is going to be a dot y file y stands for yak output will basically be a y dot tab dot c file and this y dot tab dot c will be compiled by a c compiler to generate the executable so these two tools are going to serve as the first and the second phase of the compiler okay so um, you have other tool like bison also uh, which is going to be a yak and both these are uh, lalr parsers we will see what is lalr parsers in the uh, subsequent modules then the semantic analyzer uh, there is a tool which is called as the syntax directed translator where the input is going to be a parse tree and the output will be the routines to generate intermediate code it is going to just uh, give you uh, what routines are required to generate an intermediate code for a particular piece of input the role of the semantic analyzer is to derive methods by which the structures constructed by the syntax analyzer may be evaluated or executed so there is one more tool here which is called as the syntax director translator you also have a type checker uh, where uh, 
It is based upon two common tactics. The first one is to flatten out the semantic analyzers part 3. The second one is embed the semantic analyzers uh, with the syntax analyzer which is called as syntax directed translation. So, type checking basically happens by looking at only the leaf nodes and uh, looking at just the intermediate node, interior node and then evaluating what type checking is required or you can also embed this along with the syntax analysis phase also. And then the next one is called as the intermediate code generator phase which is another utility called as automatic code generators. Now, this is very very important because uh, code generators uh, we have uh, so many algorithms, so many methodologies because in code generation the primary uh, concept or the primary problem is uh, to put uh, to get a register because as we know if you put it in a register it is going to be resulting in faster execution resulting in reduced instruction cost. So, uh, we will tend to get uh, put everything in a register and that try to perform the operation, but there are no many registers available as there are variables. So, what we normally do is we will try to do an optimization on the registers. So, with all these in place and then trying to generate code that will be a tedious task. So, what we normally do is we will try to resort to the automatic code generators where it is going to have intermediate code rules that is input will be an intermediate code generator intermediate code which is already optimized also and then you will have one some algorithm to convert this into a intermediate representation. Now, this intermediate representation is different from your three address code representation. This representation is going to be catering to the necessity of the code generator algorithm which is a template. Okay. Now, this template will be used by the code generator and then it will generate it, it has a set of rules. If this is my template the corresponding code is this, if this is my template the corresponding code is going to be something. Okay. So, what is our job? Our job is simply to convert the intermediate code which is the three address code into a representation which the code generator can basically understand. Okay. Then the task of the code generator is simply to traverse this tree and it produces functionally equivalent object code. Okay. Three address code is one type. Uh, and then output could could be the final output also. Then on to data uh, on to the next uh, tool which is called as data flow engines uh, whose input will be an intermediate code output will be the transformed code. Now, there is a simple thumb rule in code optimization where we normally say if the cost of optimization is going to be more than the cost of uh, generation do not try to optimize. Okay. So, therefore, uh, the intermediate code will be given as input to the optimizer. The optimizer tries to apply some basic optimization techniques like common sub expression elimination, um, dead code elimination, copy propagation, constant folding, algebraic simplification will be applied and then it is going to generate final code. And this code is now going to be used by the code generator for creating uh, assembly level code. So, uh, you also have automatic code generators. The code generator can basically work either at the ICG level or at the uh, final level. Okay. So, let us take this example 8 into x divided by 2. So, load uh, a with uh, uh, x multiply a comma 8 and divide a by uh, a comma 2. Okay. So, this is just an example. So, that completes this module. So, what we have discussed in this module is uh, we have basically taken an example and uh, have seen how the various phases of the compiler. Uh, basically uh, puts this code into breaks this code, understands it, analyzes it and then converts into final assembly language. And then uh, we also talked about the basic uh, compiler construction tools like your lex, your yak, automatic code generators, data flow engines and um, syntax directed translations etcetera. There are of course, other uh, uh, tools also available. Uh, one is called as the pretty printers which is going to simply check whether the printing sequence is going to be correct or not. That is it is trying to align indent all your code beautifully and then show that uh, this is what is your final code that is called as pretty printers. So, we also have data flow engines to check whether the data flows from one module to the next module is going to be correct or incorrect. So, other tools are also available. I have just listed out what is necessary for con uh, definitely necessary for a compiler to be constructed. 
and then uh, you normally integrate the tools and then modify the tools to suit your compiler needs. So, that um, is what we have talked about in this particular module. So, we will uh, uh, stop here and uh, continue with the next module.